Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Bros Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Harris. With me, of course, is the post-primer version of Mike Tagliari. You can find us on Twitter at Dan Harris 80 and at Mike Tagliari NFL Tags. How are you? It's it's a good day. Uh, we were just talking before we got started about uh, the Super Bowl halftime show, which is being performed by someone that you guys can talk about if you want. Uh, but basically, it, it brought like a, an idea to my mind. Is, are there going to be fans at the Super Bowl? Are they going to allow that this year? Because if there's no fans at the Super Bowl, that's going to be really awkward. Oh, this is a great point. This is a great point. I guess it probably depends on where things stand at that point. But man, if there are no fans at the Super Bowl, it is going to be weird. And yet we're not going to talk exactly about the performer at the halftime show, because then we'd have to get in to how our guest had to explain exactly <laughs> who this very famous individual was and all about his music. And I'm very thankful to our guest, who is the incomparable Chris Raybon from the Action Network, you can find on Twitter at his name, at Chris Raybon, who basically had to explain the history of music to both of us <laughs> in the three minutes before we started recording. So, Chris, thank you both for enlightening us uh, on, on on the history of music and, and the weekend, and also just for coming on the show to talk DFS. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here, Mike and Dan. And, uh, you know, I I think that I, now I'm kind of curious is like I need we need like an over under of like how how many of the past let's say five Super Bowl performers you guys do know like like Shakira J I know Shakira come on yes also hey. we can we can be honest Chris I mean tags could not come up with the that fellow who did the dancing oh, with no, the no, 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 no. oh yeah Bruno Mars <laughs> no, I did not know Bruno, Bruno Mars well I knew exactly who he was I couldn't no. remember his name that's all I call foul I call foul there's <laughs> hey. no way there's no way it doesn't matter Chris is here to cool us up a little bit at least thank goodness anyway he's also here to talk DFS because Chris is awesome and you <laughs> should all true. be following his work he's he's Fantastic. Also, uh, Chris, you're up there in the. Where are you right now in the accuracy competition? Too season long. You're up there too right now, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't honestly. I don't check until like I That's rarely right. check because I don't like to know. I, I feel like it influences me. So I just I. But uh, I think I was. I think I was in the top 15 last week. I'm, I might have dropped this week, but yeah, I'm trying to hang in there. Whatever. In there. You're doing terribly then if you don't check. You're, eight, you're last. <laughs> so whatever. Let's hey. just go DFS. No, actually, all three of us, I believe, are doing pretty tags monster this week. Last week, what were you? Number two? Tags? Yeah. Woo. Number two. Ugh, yeah. Gross. Uh, but I think we're all in the top 20. So let's just crush out this DFS show right it, here. Really. Okay. Our usual plan, guys. Uh, we're starting with our favorite pricier cash game play of the week at each position, discuss a couple of cash game value plays at each position. We'll do one GPP gamble at each position, a quick discussion of a defense you guys like, and then your stack of the week and your lock of the week. But before we get into it, let me briefly tell you about the Daily Juice podcast. As you might expect from its name, it is a daily podcast, 15 minutes waiting for you every morning when you wake up, talking about the best sports gambling plays of the day. It is hosted by Matt Peralt from Betting Pros, a longtime radio host out in Vegas, touches on everything, the NFL, of course, every other sport out there, though, including boxing and MMA, of course, the Masters that was going on right now, college football, everything you got anywhere you can listen to podcasts or on bettingpros.com slash Daily Juice. Again, the Daily Juice podcast every day, 15 minutes when you wake up. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with our favorite pricier cash game play of the day. Chris, since you are clearly the most knowledgeable individual about world events and music and general fantasy, (laughs) start us off. What do you got? I mean, you know, fantasy, not quite my expertise, but (laughs) that other stuff. Uh, So I I think in cash games at quarterback, it's got to be one or the other side of this. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, man. I said running back. (laughs) Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I I, I get it. I I get quarterback quarterback is the normal way. That's actually how I start planning as well with quarterback. (laughs) But tags yells if I don't start with running back. So let's start with running back. Then we'll get into quarterback later. Oh, oh, oh. I I, damn. I'm kind of curious as to why. But I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, So Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones, Aaron Jones, uh, 7,100 going against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You have a lot of positive in indicators of running back success in this game number one positive indicator Aaron Jones he's been a monster for the last (laughs) year and a half people came into the year doubting that he would repeat because some big guy named AJ Dillon happened to be drafted like Jamal Williams still plays ahead of him uh, and he's on the COVID list or maybe he came off I don't know but anyway Aaron Jones uh, smash spot Jaguars defense 
uh, one of the worst overall. So that helps not only, you know, against the run, but you, you're going to be able to move the ball. Aaron Rodgers' only issues this year uh, have come against pressure in that Tampa Bay game. So you're going to get Jacksonville, number 21 in run defense, DVOA, number 32 in pass, uh, 32 total, 14-point favorite in a game that could be a little bit uh, bad weather too. So you don't expect Green Bay to really go away from the ground game, not that they do. So I uh, love Aaron Jones here at 7,100 on DraftKings, uh, getting a little bit of a discount maybe because he was coming off the injury, played like 10 days ago. So love it. Yeah, very odd, by the way, when he, I love the, uh, probably maybe not going to play, uh, trending up, oh, let's just give him 20 touches, including leaving him in the game, even when it's a complete blowout at the very end, it was very bizarre, tags, 7,100 on DraftKings, I mean, that's got to be your guy also, right? Yeah, he's the play. I, I mean, you could be worried about Aaron Rodgers kind of doing his thing like he did last week. But unfortunately, the run defense uh, for San Francisco is much, much, much better. They've actually been really, really good, like a top five run defense, despite all the injuries they suffered. So seeing Aaron Jones back, he looked fantastic. It had nothing to do with him. It had everything to do with the game script. And the, the team just chose to throw the ball in the red zone. I, I, you can't really blame them against that team. Uh, this one. I mean, there's 30 running back touches available against this team every single week, and they're not in blowouts every single week where they're going to be against the Packers. Uh, everything that you want here, you know, a double-digit favorite, a home a running back, a guy that's involved on all three downs. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars have allowed uh, 33 or more points in four different games. Their implied team totals 33 and a half points. There's nothing to like dislike about Aaron Jones this week, so play him. Yeah, please play him. Yeah, obviously Aaron Jones is, it's kind of the guy we all uh, gravitated towards. It, now, of course, the scoring is different, but I mean, he is, what, $1,100 cheaper than Alvin Kamara on DraftKings, yeah. right? And he's $200 cheaper on Fandle. So it's closer there. Obviously, the scoring is different, but uh, that that's something where it puts you at least a little bit more to a test when you're making the decision. All right, let's get to wide receiver. Not yet quarterback, Chris. We're going to get that <laughs> next. But for start it. for now, go to wide receiver. I'm going to make everybody wait. Who's your favorite price here cash game play? Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen. Uh, listen, he, this is a guy who he had one down game this year, and that down game consisted of him catching a touchdown and well, no, really, his down game came against Cincinnati. So I, I, he had like one and a half down games. The other down game came against New Orleans where he caught a touchdown. But with Justin Herbert, he had he had one down game and it came in a game where he caught a touchdown and then left with back spasms. Uh, in every other game, he's caught, uh, what is it, seven or more passes. He's and he's set up perfectly to be a high floor weekly uh, play because you look at the Chargers and how they're set up on offense. Who do they have on one side on the perimeter? Mike Williams. What does he do? Run deep routes. What do you have on the other side? Jalen Guyton. What does he do? Run even deeper routes. And then you have Hunter Henry over the middle who still, you know, warrants some attention. And so Keenan Allen can just dog walk, you know, good cornerbacks, bad cornerbacks. It doesn't really matter uh, because he's getting these routes where, you know, he's going to be able to win underneath and, and, and in the high percentage game unless you know they want to kind of switch it up but they haven't had to so intermediate short area receiver who's going to catch seven plus balls each week uh, with a quarterback who only his only experience in the NFL has been uh, just peppering Keenan Allen with targets 7100 on DraftKings I uh, love it tags agree disagree who's your guy I have zero issue with Keenan Allen. I just think there's a better play in that price range, and it's Michael Thomas. Everybody wants to stay away from him. I don't know why. Uh, if you were to to say, like, the 49ers last year, they were a better defense, correct? I think we can all agree on that. Mm -hmm. um, in week 14 last year, Michael Thomas absolutely crushed this team for 11 receptions, 134 yards, and a touchdown. This this year, they've been a much different defense. I think everybody can see that. Uh, Devontae Adams smacking them in the face la uh, last week. By the way, that Devontae Adams game was the third time this year they have allowed a wide receiver 10 plus receptions. That's ridiculous. Um, you're not going to be able to run the ball in San Francisco. Um, so Alvin Kamara is clearly going to be involved in the passing game, but it's not a great matchup for him. Uh, I would rather go to Michael Thomas. And uh, I, I do believe he's going to have 10 plus targets in this game. He's going to rack up the receptions and rack up yours. And this is going to be the last time you're going to see him at 7,400. So, Chris, general thoughts then on Michael Thomas. $300 more, 7400 the fifth most expensive guy on DraftKings, Keenan Allen, the sixth. 
I, eesh, I, I don't often disagree with tags, but I think I, I think I disagree here. Uh, so you look at San Francisco. Yes, they've been, you know, not the same defense, uh, but they are number five in DVOA versus number one wide receivers uh, this season, according to Football Outsiders. Um, the sharp money in Saints Niners is on the under and the 49ers. And you also look at kind of like so the way I kind of project every you know pass catchers is uh you know I I have their I project their routes run and then I you know have like a targets per route run and that's how I kind of determine targets and the difference between this year and last year with Michael Thomas is that you have Jared Cook healthy you have Emmanuel Sanders who's a much higher target per route guy and even Traycon Smith has been coming on in addition to Kamara being there um there's not necessarily as much of of that like 15 catch uh you know 10 tar- 10 catch 15 target upside it's still there but it's not as it's not as um prevalent this year with Thomas just because of the guys that are also running routes around him and uh you know Sanford's I mean Dermonte Adams rips everyone but New Orleans takes pride in spreading it around whereas Aaron Rodgers is, is kind of a big F you to his whole organization for not drafting another receiver he's gonna give Adams looks like I I think I think Allen is safer like I like I like Thomas I like the thinking but I still think Allen is safer for cash games based on what we've seen this year yeah, I, I just want to come back on that Emmanuel Sanders thing. And, and I agree with you. And that's why I was worried about a little bit of the ceiling of Michael Thomas and like redraft formats this year. Um, but Sanders, it's really weird. I don't it, It's It's such a small sample size that I can't take too much from it. But it's only been two games, right? But when Michael Thomas is in the lineup, Emmanuel Sanders has only run 37 routes in those two games combined. Uh, last year or last week was a blowout. But again, Michael Thomas was out there for most of the game. Traquan Smith is playing more snaps than Sanders. So that's something I'm kind of taking into consideration. And Emmanuel Sanders is playing more of his snaps in the slot. And Michael Thomas in the slot has been like K1 Williams, their slot cornerback. He's going to miss this game. So I'm not, I understand where you're going with that, but if he's not on the field, if he like, I, he's getting targeted more on a per route basis because I don't think he's running very many routes. And Jared cook may have gotten benched last week uh, for his fumble near the goal line. We saw Adam Troutman play a little bit more, uh, but I don't know. I, I just think that this is a team like Michael Thomas. I think we all can agree. He's a very he's a young man. He's a little immature. <laughs> he's, he's a little immature. He he's he has an ego. I think we uh, all know that. And I think they need to feed it a little bit. Otherwise, it can get out of hand. It could be like a I don't want to say a T.O. situation, but more of like a guy that says, hey, I, I want to get targets like give me the damn ball. And this is a week where they can probably do that. Uh, I, I just like Michael Thomas a whole lot as a wide receiver. And I I, I don't want to judge him based on his two games this year against a Bucks defense that really has had his number. You know, it's a divisional game. Um, Carlton Davis, one of the better upcoming cornerbacks. I just don't think San Francisco has that. Sherman sure, sure might be back. He's, he practiced. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be. Well, sure, if Sherman comes back, I might actually upgrade Michael uh, Thomas. Because Richard <laughs> Sherman was a dog at the end of last year. Like he, like Sammy Watkins, like just dragged him all over the field and said, I'm done with you. Uh, okay. I get it. I mean, I, 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 I have a pretty big, I have a pretty big gap in my rankings with like, I have Allen uh, two and Thomas 15. So maybe I need, Oh to, wow. But, but I mean, that's just I like on my initial too. projections. So it's like, it's, I'm kind of just going off that. Like it, yeah. I think it's a little tougher, but hey, we'll see. I like right. Allen though too. Go ahead. This was great. First of all, tags. I would like to just make sure I don't let it pass without applauding your diplomacy in describing how you feel about Michael Thomas. Generally, <laughs> that that is well done. Uh, I think Richard Sherman. My guess is he won't play. They have a buy next week, I believe. Right. So my guess is they're going to hold back Sherman unless I'm don't have the schedule right in my head. Oh uh, yeah, there is this next week. No, they could. They definitely yeah. could. But he did yeah, return yeah. to practice, so like there's the possibility. That that absolutely right. Uh, and I will say that I also have Allen ahead of Thomas this week in my rankings, in my initial projections. He's slightly ahead. And on FanDuel, again, the scoring is different, but Allen is seven hundred dollars cheaper than Michael Thomas. So in there, he's certainly in my FanDuel lineups. But that was a great discussion, boys. And as a reward, we're going to quarterbacks where Chris <laughs> has just been asking to go the entire time. So all right, Chris. Third position up, start us a quarterback, favorite pricier cash game play of the day. I'm getting dizzy here. Like, we're going. This is like That's we're going right. That's what I do. Here. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> That's what I do. I just try yeah. to mix you up so you can't give good advice. Go ahead. <laughs> so, I, I think, you know, given that, you know, we're waiting, we're middle of the year, you're going to, we should have value uh, at, at some other positions this week. So, uh, I think that it's got to be one of the two guys in this Bills Cardinals game. Uh, the over-under is, is 
shooting up. I think it's like 56 and a half now. Kyler Murray, I can't seem to get his yards per carry high enough each week. Uh, he is coming up as my number one overall you know, value in terms of projected plus minus versus his salary. Uh, and then Josh Allen right behind him. I, I think Murray is the safer play just because he, he's at home. And before Josh Allen played the spaghetti sauce Seahawks defense, <laughs> uh, he was actually struggling a little bit. Um, and, and whereas the Cardinals have put up 30 straight points, uh, 30 or more points in, four, in each of their last four games. I mean, Kyra Murray's playing himself right into this MVP discussion, whereas Allen kind of cooled off after the hot start. And then, you know, everyone goes off against the Seahawks D. So I, I just think if you're ranking him in terms of safety, you, you give the edge to Murray. But out, like if, if Murray puts up points, we know quarterback production is correlated. The correlation is uh, above uh, 0.5 in terms of opposing quarterbacks. So either way, you should get a, a fine game out of Allen, but uh, I think I like the spending the top dollar and, and getting Kyler in there. Tags, I got to imagine it's it's one of those two guys for you too, right? I like Kyler quite a bit. Uh, I would like him a lot more if Tredavious White sits uh, because that there goes the shadow cornerback on DeAndre Hopkins. He did return to practice today. I he did today? Right, okay, did, yes. we'll, we'll have to see how that goes because he has been limited earlier in the year and then they made him inactive on game day. So it's something to watch with him for sure. He hasn't even been the same player, to be honest. So I do like Kyler, but... I mean, I, I want to talk about one other one other quarterback who this total has been seemingly going down really fast. And I don't know why uh, Houston Texans at Cleveland Browns, uh, Deshaun Watson. Watson is a guy that I mean, he hasn't averaged a whole lot of plays per game, uh, but they throw the ball an awful lot. They throw the ball on 62 percent of their pass attempts, while Browns opponents have thrown the ball on nearly 61 percent. Those are both above average numbers. But the Browns opponents have also averaged like 68 plays per game. Uh, so it's possible that Watson has a lot like an increased play share, I guess, this this week. David Johnson is looking unlikely to play. Duke Johnson's not a guy that you want to run the ball with 18 times down the gut. Uh, Cleveland is more of a funnel defense than they are a team that you want to run the ball against. What does concern me, though, is that total dropping, because uh, I think it started the week at 54. And Tags, now, I think it's the, it's the wind. Weather. It's yeah. the wind, right? Isn't there supposed to be a pretty wind and rain and and uh, and Cleveland run like their run heaviness in those conditions? Remember, the Raiders game yeah. was 16 to six. I will right. say this, though, Tags, like uh, I think I actually think Watson is a great um, play this week. Uh, I, I I think he's probably better for tournaments just because of that weather. But uh, I just spent a whole podcast two podcasts uh, talking about how I love the Texans at plus three and a half. So. Oh, yes. Good. Because <laughs> I'm about to do a podcast later today, Chris, where we were in the uh, DraftKings championship, like the pick with with Matt Pratt. We go in and I like, oh, I'm glad you like them too. Then I like the Texans getting the three and a half from the Browns. So you do too? You're in on that? Oh, like the Browns have uh, beat the Bengals barely twice. They beat right. the Washington football team. And, uh, and they, oh, by the way, everyone said, oh, the, the wind and the weather favor and the no pressure that the Raiders get and their terrible run defense favors the Browns and at home in this environment. And then, uh, what right. do they do? Get blank, uh, get scored, outscored 16-6. 16-6. Yeah. yeah like no. the same, same type of, same type of game. Yeah. Anyway, Tex, that is why, because there is supposed to be some, some kind of nasty weather. That's the, the crazy game. part though. I mean, come on, we're on Thursday. I, I mean, Weatherman, I, I appreciate the job they have, and I understand all that, but, I mean, <laughs> this is three days out, guys. Like, there is – have you ever tried to plan, like, a golf day with your buddies, and you look at the you look at the calendar, and you're like, oh, okay, it's not going to rain. It's beautiful, like a, a 5% chance of rain. You get to that day, and it certainly rains. And then the days that you plan for it to rain, it doesn't. So, I'm – I don't want to build that in yet. I just think it's crazy. It's already dropped down to 49. Um, that's a five point drop from where it started. So I, I apologize to all weather people who are listening. To I'm this not podcast. mad at them. I appreciate okay. what they do. It's just, I, I'm not going to look at it until the day of. <laughs> I, it's it's fair. Although the, the weekend that there was the, the crazy, you know, the one with the Browns and the Raiders, they had that one pretty well back, which is basically <laughs> like six games, get away from them completely. But anyway, yeah, that that's fine. I mean, I get it, but that is, if you're wondering tags, that is the reason why it is. Is supposed to be some pretty bad uh, weather there. Anyway, it, for my opinion I, on Fandle, same thing. I mean, I like I like both these guys. I I like. I, I'm wondering. Of course, it was I, God. What did you say? Spaghetti sauce defense. Yeah. Whatever you said about it, Chris. <laughs> Which again, 
again, not as diplomatic as the way Dax described the Michael Thomas situation, but more appropriate, in my opinion. So I, <laughs> I think part of it also, I'm hoping that maybe John Brown finally at full health also let them go. You know, they pass a lot early on downs anyway. But either one of those guys is great. But really, Murray is just he's a model breaker. So I, I agree going with one of the two guys in that. Yeah, game. real quick. I mean, you, tell, you say Murray's a model breaker. I have the numbers in front of me. Uh, on on DraftKings this season, Kyler Murray has hit value in 100% of his game, <laughs> outscoring his salary-based expectation by 11.96 points per oh, game. Geez. By 11.96 points per game. That's yeah. Nuts. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's great. Let's go to tight ends now. Let's go to the uh, pricier cash game play at the position. Who's your guy, Chris? It's got to be Darren Waller. There's just a kind of like it's a wasteland this week. I mean, Mark Andrews cannot be trusted anymore. And then we have Kelsey on a bye and George Kittle, of course, is is out for, you know, the what looks like the year. So um, Darren Waller coming up is my top value. Fifty nine hundred. He's under that like magic six K number where you start to really get worried about paying for tight ends. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think that, you know, in this game against Denver, you're going to see Waller keep getting targeted because you have uh, Callahan and Bouye looking like they are going to return on the outside. And the, the Raider wide receivers have been hit or miss in Derek Carr. We know he likes to go with the safer throws and, and he's been good this year. And so uh, he's getting the, the ball to Waller one way or another. So like Waller. I mean, I assume. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, Waller. Waller's seen at least six targets in seven of eight games this year. Tight ends have caught 80% of their passes against the Broncos, so I have zero issues. If you can afford Waller, get him. Yeah. No. I'm sorry that this one's going to be a short segment, but I, I agree completely. I think he's really the only absolutely reliable guy. You can go, and it's going to be a big game. He's 7,000 on FanDuel, but I have fit him into my lineups uh, one way or another. Part of that is by going to cash game value plays, which is where we're going next. We're starting again with running backs here, Chris, but give me, let's start with one. Give me a cash game value play for you at running back. So I think the way it's, and there could be, obviously, we're recording this on Thursday, so there's a bunch of injury situations that could open up value, but the way it's looking right now, if there's, you know, no guys ruled out, uh, I think there's value at Antonio Gibson at 5,600. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you look at the worst run defenses in the league, and uh, the Lions are right up there with the uh, with the Packers and at, at the top. So uh, Lions actually giving up the most PPR points per game, and, and Gibson's share of the backfield carries have gone up. You're still going to see, I think, McKissick in a hashtag revenge game uh, get his get his routes, but uh, you know, you're, you're seeing the, the 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 carry share go up for 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 Gibson. It's in the 60s or better in most of the games now. Um, so you should still be getting a good 15 touches out of him at 5,600 against the worst uh, run defense in the league. I think you have to take it uh, in this kind of week. I mean, there's not a lot of guys. I think you could go James Robinson, but he's 66. I don't know if he really counts as a value play anymore. So I'm um, going with Antonio Gibson at 56 is, I think, the safest value play as we record this. Yeah, I think he missed, was it a shoulder yesterday that he missed practice? Yeah, with? I mean, it's Wednesday. You can't, like, don't no, no, look no, at 100... in- Wednesday practice reports. No, they, no, no, are, no. they are tilting. They are tilting. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct. And I believe that he returned to practice yeah, today. Yeah, so I think exactly. he's probably going to be they, fine. They all do. Yeah, <laughs> everybody does. It's, I, I know. I get, uh, you know, panicked messages about A.J. Brown every single week. I'm like, relax. He takes off Thursdays. Chill out. Uh, all right. So Gibson tags, what do you think? 5,600. Is that's he a guy the, you want to play? That's where the value is right now. Um, you know, even if you remove the production that the Lions have allowed through the air to running backs, which is a lot, they have allowed 21 fantasy points per game on the ground to running backs. That's more than 10 teams have allowed to the position as a whole. Yeah. I mean, this one, I, I don't see any way that Detroit just blows out Washington with a defense the way that they've been playing this year. So it should be a lower scoring game. It should be somewhat of a neutral game script. So Antonio Gibson, uh, he has been getting a lot more work in neutral game scripts. If they fall behind, that's where J.D. McKissick would come in. And that's where there's a little bit of risk built in. But that $5,600 price tag already has that risk kind of built into it considering the matchup. Yeah. All right. Give me another guy here then tags other than Gibson. Who you're thinking I, I mean, about. Mike Davis is someone that we have to keep an eye on, um, like clearly, because if if Christian McCaffrey doesn't play this week and it seems like that he's doubtful, 
Mm-hmm. He's bas- he's all but been declared out. They basically said there's now optimism, thankfully, with the second opinion that he's going to be back next week. So, I mean, he's out. He's so out Mike Davis is chalked then, right? We, right. Have yeah. to, we have to play him. I was saying, I was, I was, I was, that was like the, the layup for you, Tags. Like, I, I specifically went away because I like, Dave, <laughs> he's 4K. He's like a plus 10. I don't need no damn layups. He's being so nice to you, Tags. Let's be oh, honest. After you didn't know who the weekend was. That's okay. Right. <laughs> so 4,000. <000. laughs> Yeah, he's, uh, he's he's an autoplay. If, if McCaffrey's out, even though Tampa Bay is a tough matchup, where Davis shines is the passing game, and uh, Tampa Bay has allowed, I think, the sixth most production to running backs through the air. So, uh, yeah, it, fully, I, I don't love the matchup against Tampa Bay, but at 4K, to get a running back that's going to get 15-plus touches, sign me up. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the, the matchup's not good. He has not looked good of late. I think he's got 168 yards total or something in his last three starts but it doesn't at that price it's just it's too good to ignore chris anybody else that you're looking at as a cash game value player was it really gibson and you left davis for tags yeah so i th- like gibson is the top guy just based on like the news we have but i th- we have to monitor the situations in la obviously the duke johnson situation with with david johnson you know if he's out then you know duke is gonna get pretty much the entire backfield uh, regardless of you know what you know what whether he's efficient or not, so that's another situation. Also, revenge to game, monitor. revenge game narrative, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Game. So you and okay. then and then of course uh, I think we we think uh, Mixon's going to be back and, and Miles Sanders is going to be back, um, but if they're not, uh, you know, you're looking at Boston Scott and, and Gio Bernard. So really, just have to wait and see on some of these late calls. And then of course you also have Chubb. You know, is he going to be back? Mm-hmm. Then Kareem Hunt jumps into the right. discussion. Houston's run defense has been uh, awful, so. Um, all right, Tags, anybody else you're looking at or you want to go to wide receiver? Not really. Running back is such a small pool this week. Yeah. All right, before we move on, guys, let's talk about Pristine Auction. You know Pristine Auction, okay? They are the ones who supply us with our helmets for each of our giveaways, including the Alvin Kamara helmet that we are giving away right now. This is where you go for sports memorabilia. I legitimately signed in earlier this morning, and it shows me a signed Bo Jackson helmet up for auction. And right below that, a signed Calvin Ridley jersey up for auction. I haven't even gone to the football section. They're just like, here, here are some awesome typical auctions that we're running today. Enjoy. Sports memorabilia, this is where it is. But like anything, anything you want. My kids love the Marvel movies. A signed Thor and Hawkeye picture on their way. My son is obsessed with Neil Armstrong and landing on the moon. Little Apollo 11 artifacts on their way. Legitimately thousands and thousands and thousands of auctions every single day, whatever you want. And because there are so many daily auctions, the prices are nuts. DJ Chark, signed jersey, $32.76. It's free to register. It's free to browse. It's free to bid. Just go to pristineauction.com. See for yourself, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, auction.com. You want $5 in free credits? Use our code FANTASYPROS in the registration field when you sign up. They'll know we sent you. Again, that's pristineauction.com. Use our code FANTASYPROS. All right, let's go to wide receiver then, and let's go to you, Chris. Who's a cash game value play for you? Okay, okay. So a couple of guys that stand out are uh, Devontae Parker, who's 5K. Um, He should be the clear number one uh, against the Chargers. I I know, you know, the Chargers can can defend number one receivers, but they haven't been spectacular in DVO. They've been 10th. I think, you know, they'll lean on him. And at 5K, I mean, you're getting a a guy who should should get a similar workload to the guys up there at 6K uh, and beyond. And then uh, another guy is Jerry Judy. Uh, Jerry Judy, he is really emerging with Drew Locke, and they're going to get some O-linemen back this week in Denver. Uh, They they should get a couple of O-linemen back. And you look at the Raiders, and uh, this is not a very good secondary. And Judy is, you know, he's running, like, even though he's playing the slot, he's still running about 85, 90% uh, of the routes these days. And uh, they're they're making it a point to work on the chemistry with him and Locke week in, week out. Uh, and this could be a, a game where both teams score some points. The total is 51. Uh, no weather concerns, obviously. So uh, love those two guys in the uh, mid-range. Tags, thoughts on both uh, Parker, who I believe you said, Chris, was at 5,000, and mm-hmm. Judy, who at is at 5,600. Yeah. 
Yep. Yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't mind them. There's some other guys in that range that I'm thinking about, like Deontay Johnson at 52. Uh, the guy's, I mean, basically seen 10 targets in every full game that he's played. Uh, Roethlisberger's injury is something to definitely monitor uh, with both of his knees reportedly hurting. I I don't even know. But Deontay Johnson, his, his average... He's also, target, by the way, got the COVID situation, of course, which, again, he hasn't tested positive, but he was deemed a close contact, right? Right, with correct. McDonald and sat next to him. So that's, of course, something to monitor. Yeah, for sure. Uh, DJ Moore at 5,100. Moore is not someone I've played this year at all. Um, but the matchup against Tampa, I've talked about the fact that they are not going to run the ball against Tampa Bay. It's that's, that's not happening. Mike Davis is going to hit a brick wall. So they're going to throw the ball a ton. DJ Moore had success against them last time, uh, eight catches for 120 yards. So at 5,100, it's, it's tempting. I, I like Parker there because you think about the Dolphins offense and you're like, where are these targets going to go? <laughs> they have to go somewhere. Right. And like outside of Parker, I don't know if there's another wide receiver, like a Jakeem Grant, maybe that's going to see five targets. Um, but Parker should see a ton of targets. Casey Hayward is a tough matchup, uh, and that's who Parker is going to see most of the day. That's what worries me just a little bit. Um, but I, I definitely don't mind uh, Devontae Parker. All right. Very good. Anybody else you guys want to talk about? You want to move on to quarterback? If you're looking for a really, really like you need to save a lot of money because you spent up at other positions. Uh, Josh Reynolds at thirty five hundred. Mm hmm. I don't think he's the worst play ever. Uh, I did the same thing with Kendrick Bourne a couple weeks ago against Seattle. I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I need to save tons of money, and he was cheap. Uh, Josh Reynolds has seen 22 targets over the last three games. That matchup again. That's another team. The Rams are not going to be able to run the ball like they typically have this year. I think it's going to be one of those games where Goff throws the ball an awful lot. So Josh Reynolds at 3,500, I kind of like. Okay, good enough for me. Let's go to quarterback now. Uh, let's get to a cash game value play. Go ahead, Chris. So a value play in cash games, this would be a little different from a value play in tournaments because in, in tournaments, I would go way, you know, down cheap. But if we're talking a guy who I think still has like a reasonable floor, uh, I think you have to look at Justin Herbert at 6,600. Um, you know, not the cheapest guy, but uh, look at every game he's played. He's 19.7, 24, 27.4, 41.5, 23.2, and 26.4. Those are his uh, DraftKings point totals. He's been uh, overvalued every single game by an average of 6.78 points per game. Uh, and this Dolphins defense, which, you know, had had some good numbers on paper. I think they entered last week number three in DVOA, but uh, that didn't matter against a, a guy who can kind of a dynamic player in Kyler Murray. And I think uh, Herbert with the weapons he has is kind of the same situation. And he's even been able to survive some really questionable coaching decisions. Uh, so really, that's the that's the guy I would feel comfortable about uh, with in that tier uh, below, you know, Allen and, and Murray and those guys. I will say on a side note, Chris, just because we talked about some threads, I so desperately want to take the Chargers getting like a point and a half, I believe, from the Dolphins, but I don't know if I could actually pull the trigger on it. I just wanted you to know that because I know we <laughs> talked about it before because of the coaching. Uh, tags, mm -hmm. Herbert, what do you think? You can't argue against Herbert the way he's played, the floor he's given you every single week. So if you're pay if you're paying up to 6,600, you need like almost like a locked in performance because you're spending a lot of your money and then you're going to be forced to like go cheaper at, you know, wide receiver most likely because people don't want to go cheap at running back. I just want to say that the reason I like Herbert and I, I probably like this call because I was going to mention uh, Carson Wentz. I, I was going to say Jared Goff, I think, belong in that conversation. Yeah. But Herbert has given you such a floor. And I told Dan before we started recording today, before Chris even got in the room, uh, that last week, you know, Joe Flacco had basically he went back in time and turned into elite Joe Flacco again. He, he scored 20.5 fantasy points in that game. He finished as the number 18 quarterback on the week. That is just stupid to me. Like it, it, it just goes to show you the floor you need for quarterbacks has gone way up. Like you can't, I remember, and I know that you guys know, we used to go back and look for quarterbacks that were like 4,800. We're like, Hey, if they hit three X, we don't give a crap, you know, cause we're going to be able to jam in Le'Veon Bell and, and Christian McCaffrey. That's basically what we were looking to do. Uh, and, or David Johnson and Le'Veon Bell back in the, a couple of years ago, but now we can't do that. So you need a, a quarterback that has the potential of someone like Justin Herbert and the, what he's shown kind of every single week. Wentz has been a little bit more hit or miss. You like to think the matchup against the giants works out just because they continue to pass. He's the, the pass catchers are getting healthier and healthier for them. So at 59, Hunter Carson Wentz is pretty tempting. Yeah, I, I, I like that call as well. On FanDuel, Goff is six hundred dollars cheaper than Herbert. So if you're if you're really struggling there, because again, I, I for the spaghetti whatever it was, spaghetti sauce defense, I, I think <laughs> that that's right. I think that Goff trusting Goff is never never fun, but I do think that this is gonna be a game. Goff Where's is it? interesting. I think like he might be if he's highly owned in, in in tournaments, I would fade him because 
the one thing about Seattle is you, how do you beat them? You, you throw the ball down the field. And that, like the Rams, used like, matched up pretty well against Seattle these few last few years because um, they could they could do that. But this year they've been so in a shell, and I don't know if it's if the matchup is going to really favor them the same way it used to. And, and then the, Seattle also has a the a, like a top ten run defense, so like the Rams could like uncharacteristically struggle. Uh, this week, I, I think it's a little bit of like if if everyone's like way too high in the Rams because of last week and the you know Buffalo explosion, which I think was I was on. I was like, yo, every all these Buffalo receivers, John Brown, like mm-hmm. all of them. Mm-hmm. But like I could I could definitely see the Rams going over owned. So I'm a little I'm not like worried about Goff because I think he'll still get his yards. But like I, I think in tournaments, that's something to keep a, an eye on if he's going to be like one of the higher owned QBs. Yep. All right. Let's finish up with our cash game and then we'll get to some tournament plays. Let's do tight end. Who's a cash game value play for you, Chris? There are actually a couple of guys that you could play for value in cash games. Like they just none of them really like feel like as safe as Darren Waller. But uh, you look at Noah Fant and TJ Hawkinson at 49 and 5100 respectively. Uh, those two guys are the guys that I think have the, the, the other top two floors on this slate. Um, and then you look at Dallas Goddard. Uh, at 4,200, he ran a route on 74% of the dropbacks uh, when he returned. Now, that, you know, it didn't really result in a lot of production, and Philly is getting healthier, but um, that may be kind of the better best way to invest in, in Philly's offense at this point, just because um, you do expect Goddard to, you know, now that he's not as rusty, to continue to, to, to kind of uh, ascend again to where he was and where Ertz has been. Uh, and then, like, Austin Hooper, I think, at 3,900. The, the concern is the, the, the weather, so that's something to watch. And, and Hunter Henry at 4,100. So there are options. Just none of them, kind of, they all pay on comparison to, uh, to Waller. What do you think, Tex? Yeah, I like Hawkinson a little bit, um, but again, he's close enough to Waller where you can probably get there. Uh, I'd rather play Waller, uh, but Goddard is the one that if, if you're looking for a value, I think Goddard's it. Uh, I know a lot of people are worried about you know the Giants and they haven't allowed a whole bunch of production to tight ends, but uh, they have seen just two tight ends all season long who have seen more than four targets. Uh, we know Philadelphia runs through their tight ends. That's just how it works. Uh, Jalen Rager's out there now. He's going to be able to play that Deshaun Jackson stretch the field role. Travis Fulgham has brought enough attention on him. Uh, Goddard should be open over the middle of the field, uh, similar to the way that uh, the first time they played, Richard Rodgers actually racked up six catches for 85 yards. Uh, I do believe that this is a matchup you can target with, with Dallas Goddard. I have him ranked as a top five tight end in, in redraft leagues, so why the heck wouldn't I play him at 4,200 this week? Yeah, Goddard is definitely the guy who stuck out for me. That That's bold text. I like it. I'm eighth, though. Not crazy. So uh, I think he he's certainly a guy to consider. Let's go to GPPs. We're going to start again at running back. So, uh, Chris, give me a GPP play here at running back. So at running back, I think, you know, we're going to have some clear chalk with, with Davis and uh, and Duke if, if, they, if uh, Johnson's out. So uh, I think that, you know, some of the guys who you can look at kind of – in in these like middle middle price tiers between uh, Aaron Jones and those guys at the cheaper end. So one guy is Josh Jacobs at 6,500. Uh, he's a guy who you know people are gonna look at Denver's defense and say, ah, this is not a good matchup. But um, Denver's defense looks like uh, you know Mike Purcell is is gonna be out, and he's been a major part of their run defense. Without him, you know the they've been getting run on a lot more. And he's he's out for the season, so yeah, he's definitely out. So Jacobs got 31, I think, carries in that in that last game. Uh, they're clearly willing to feed him, uh, so he's a guy that could easily be the top scorer based on volume. That's really what you're looking for. Uh, and uh, and then uh, another guy is Leonard Fournette. Fournette is kind of the, the 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 pass down back. He took over that role from McCoy, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see him be the lead back. Uh, going forward for Tampa Bay. They didn't run at all last season, so he's probably going to be off people's radars, but he's a guy who can easily get uh, 20 touches. He got 15 carries and six targets in the Giants game, and you're playing a bad uh, Carolina defense that can be run on in a game. The Bucks should be ahead and, and bounce back, and uh, Fournette is a nice pivot off, off, guy, uh, off a guy like Gibson, who's uh, $100 more expensive. For net 5,500 on DraftKings, 6,400 on FanDuel. How about you, Tags? GPP plays at running back. Yeah, I'm looking up towards the top when people want to play Aaron Jones, rightfully so, and maybe even Alvin Kamara. They mix those guys in. James Robinson's up there. Uh, 
James Conner is just not going to be played. That's basically what it comes down to. And uh, it feels an awful lot like last week, but understand, like knowing that James Conner completely busted last week for a, guy, a lot of guys that played him in tournaments, uh, I expect his ownership to be down a little bit. Uh, at 6,900, they're making you pay for it. But uh, when you add in everything, you know, Pittsburgh's coming back home. They're a heavy favorite in this game. I don't know if the Bengals are going to put up a whole lot of points on them. Ben Roethlisberger dealing with the two injured knees or whatever's going on with that. He hasn't had a whole, he's not going to have a whole lot of time to practice with the team. Uh, this James Conner's fresh coming off a game where he think he got what six carries against the Cowboys uh so you look at this um this Bengals defense that's allowed basically like five yards per carry and it's like all right James Conner this could be your crush spot where it's like he finds the end zone multiple times catches three passes for 30 40 yards and uh so it, it's 6900 I think that he's definitely in play for tournaments all right let's go to wide receiver give me a GPP play at wide receiver Chris in the like normal price range uh, I think the the guy I would look at is Tyra Boyd at 6,400. Yeah. Uh, I think he'll be under 5% owned. That's what we have him projected at. Um, he's the only receiver with a top 15 ceiling we, uh, at Fantasy Labs we currently have projected for under uh, 5% ownership. And Pittsburgh, they, they're not... Like they're a good defense, but they're not complete. Like they're not prohibitive to the point where no one's putting up numbers against them. Uh, last week we saw Ceedee Lamb, a, a kind of who plays a similar role for the Cowboys. Uh, you know, put up a good stat line. You know, catch a touchdown with a third string quarterback or fourth string, whatever you want to call him, quarterback. And, and Tyra Boyd, I mean, there's almost no way he gets above five percent ownership, considering you know all of the other receivers you have in the, in that price range. And he's a guy that, especially on DraftKings, he can catch. You know, he has that ten catch upside. And if Cincinnati's uh, playing from behind, uh, it's even it's even better for him. And then a guy in the low end that, you know, it's like a complete dart throw. Um, but I think he will continue to play uh, a, a majority of the snaps is Cam Sims. Dontrell Inman uh, looks like he's still not practicing. Cam Sims uh, came on as that number two receiver, you know, for the Washington football team and you have a quarterback and I always watch for these situations. You have, you know, Washington's down to its third string quarterback in, in Alex Smith. And, you know, just like Kyle Allen, you know, Alex Smith is another guy that probably practices a lot with Cam Sims because, you know, you're, he wasn't on the first team for much of the year. So um, Cam Sims, the guy who came on last week and really gave them a jolt and uh, three catches for 110 yards. That's that perfect kind of GPP upside you're, you're looking for. He has some yak ability, he has some deep downfield ability, he caught a touchdown two games before that. Um, and I'm pretty sure no one will be on him. And he could very well run like all of the perimeter routes on the outside this week for Washington. And Detroit's number, they're, they're giving up the most uh, – Schedule adjusted receiving yards per game to number two wide receivers. Tags, before we get into your picks, give me your thoughts on first Boyd and then Sims. I love the Boyd call. Boyd, I mean, the matchup there against Mike Hilton, I don't even know if Mike Hilton's going to play in the slot. He had to miss last week, so they brought down Cameron Sutton to play. Uh, he's a safety that they brought down, and he did not play particularly well. Um, so I do like Boyd an awful lot, and I think people are underestimating him uh, in terms of, like, in every single in DFS and redraft and all that stuff because there have been just 12 wide receivers this year who have seen at least um, eight targets in 62% of their games. Tyler Boyd is one of them. Um, and he's got Joe Burrow. It's like, you know, you think about the Steelers and their blitzing and he's going to, he's going to need to get the ball out quick. You know, the, the short average depth of target. I like Boyd quite a bit. I wish his price was down a little bit. Uh, he was actually on my list of tournament guys to talk about. So I like that Sims. I, I just don't know if that's going to be a high scoring game that I necessarily want to attack. I, I definitely appreciate the logic behind it. And it's a deep play to dig down. Uh, I might look at someone like Jalen Rager. Uh, you know, we talked about Wentz. We talked about the fact that that team throws a lot, even in, even when they're ahead. I think the Eagles have the second highest pass rate in the NFL. Um, Rager is someone that in his first week back in the lineup, he came back before anybody expected. He saw six targets, had one carry in that game. So they want to get him the ball. Uh, when you look at Travis Fulgham, he's probably going to be shadowed by James Bradbury, who has done a good job with number ones for the most part. Rager is going to be that field stretcher against Isaac Yaidem. He's terrible. <laughs> like there's nothing, there's no easy way to say this. I mean, he's been terrible and that's why the Broncos let him go. Uh, so I, I do like Jalen Rager as a tournament play this week. Yeah, he was definitely on my list. Again, if you're other than Bradbury, you can really ex exploit the past defense there. So I really like that call as well. Okay. Anybody else we haven't talked about a wide receiver guys that you want to bring up or should we just move to quarterbacks? Probably Tyler, probably Tyler Lockett. I mean, I should okay. probably mention him just because, I mean, I know he's busted in like four of his last five games, like finished outside the top 50 wide receivers, which is why no one wants to talk about him. But uh, DK Metcalf has a much tougher matchup. Uh, Darius Williams and Jalen Ramsey have been so damn good on the perimeter for the Rams. So 
you can beat him in the slot. I mean, Troy Hill is not a, he's not a great cornerback. So if they, if, I mean, the Seattle Seahawks are smart and they are, uh, I expect, uh, Lockett to have a big game this week. All right, let's go to quarterback. Give me a GPP play, Chris. So this is the, the time where I think you go down to the, the bottom of the, of the salary spectrum. And there are actually a number of guys. I, I think that, uh, you can play the first guy uh, I'll talk about is uh, Tua at, at 5,600. You know, we keep, you know, there's really all this uncertainty there, which I think it plays in the, into the favor uh, of a guy like Tua. Like we don't really know exactly what he is, but um, showed pretty well last week. You know, that first game was really rough. Uh, and I think, you know, it's always a good idea to kind of bet on these ascending rookies before they really have their their breakouts. And one of the things I was most kind of pleased with Tua last week, because I didn't know if he could still move or how well he could move, but uh, seven carries for 35 yards. I know everyone scrambles on the Cardinals, um, but that was still encouraging to see, you know, going forward. So like Tua at 5,600, uh, if the, as long as the weather is permitting, I, I think Jake Luton at 5,400 is a guy who's going to throw the ball down the field in a game where uh, they should, you know, they're projected to be down by two scores uh, and Drew Locke at 5,500, right in the middle of those two guys. Again, getting some old linemen back, um, getting more chemistry with his receiving core, which is you know finally healthy outside of uh, of Cortland Sutton. So like all three of those guys, and um, even even the, the three guys under them, uh, Daniel Jones. Uh, always a threat to run the ball. Remember he had that 80 yarder against Philly. So um, he's the cheapest quarterback on the slate. I uh, never think that's a bad idea. And GPP is projected to be 1% owned or less. Uh, Alex Smith threw for 300 plus yards against the, the Giants last week. He's playing Detroit. It's a much worse pass defense. Uh, and Nick Mullins, remember he averages over eight yards per attempt for his uh, career. And it's a big bounce back spot for San Francisco who's getting healthier uh, at receiver. So uh, like, like, I really like all of the guys price 5,600 <laughs> or below uh, to, to, in short uh, on uh, DraftKings. All right, Tags, we've got 13 recommendations right there. Who's your favorite? <laughs> uh, of, uh, no, that's all great, by the way, Chris. No, it really is. But uh, Tags, who do you like here as a GPP play? It would be Goff um, for me because, you know, we talked about the cash game plays like Carson Wentz and Justin Herbert. He's he's sandwiched in between those guys. And while I do like Goff an awful lot, uh, he does have a lower floor. If he's not pass, if he's if he's not hitting his marks passing, basically he screws you because he offers nothing on the ground and there's no floor for that. And that's basically what you're looking for in cash. So I think Jared Goff is a better tournament play at 6,500. He's very easy to stack so yeah jared goff would be the one i choose all right let's get to tight end the final position in our gpp play who do you have chris so i think you know i mentioned some of them kind of in the cash game i think they could they, they can probably be good tournament plays like noah fant uh and uh hawkinson depending on the ownership because i don't think i think waller will be like just mega 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 chalk so uh I, and then Goddard will be kind of the chalk on the other end. So Fant and Hawkinson stand out. Uh, and then Evan Engram and, uh, and Hunter Henry. Just essentially the... Oh, and one more is, is Eric Ebron. Um, he's a, a guy who... You look at the... the Pittsburgh Steelers and you think about the three receivers and so I think that kind of keeps people off Ebron but uh, he's been kind of in the mix and, and Vance McDonald went on the COVID list I believe so you, now you're looking at a situation where it could be Ebron that would inherit kind of all of the tight end routes Zach Gentry has been a healthy scratch this entire year pretty much so um, Ebron is double digit DraftKings points in three straight uh, he has two touchdowns over his last two games and uh you know averaging a little over four catches a game over the past three so uh, he's kind of a sneaky guy as well all right tags how about you I had Ebron down as someone I liked quite a bit um, in tournaments. You know, Hawkinson, I typically try to stay with tight ends so much. I don't vary my tight end plays uh, very much, honestly. I know some people like to get exposure to so many different ones just in case they miss, but uh, tight end has been just a crapshoot this 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 year. So I'd rather just try and find a guy that I like and stick to him. Um, if you're looking for a dirt cheap play, um, Gerald Everett at 3,100. Uh, Tyler Higby's not running the routes. They have Everett doing that. He's more of a wide receiver. So when you look at the Seattle defense and, you know, if we if this game turns into the projected shootout that I think it's going to be, uh, Gerald Everett is someone at 3,100 who gives you a lot of salary cap relief. And, um, you know, if he catches a touchdown, you're happy with it. All right, let's talk real quick about a DST. Chris Tags almost always just likes to go as, as cheap as he can Pretty much. feel like he's not going to vomit when choosing his DST. So who are you looking at this week? Yeah, that's Jeff definitely been the strategy, especially on DraftKings. They're just not pricing DSTs to a point where uh, there's there's value. So 
uh, this week, yeah, uh, I think that you look at the the, the landscape and the, the DSTs that stick out to me are all below twenty like four hundred. I think you could go with uh, Houston against Cleveland again. I, I just think Baker Mayfield, always a guy that's going to give you uh, some upside for turnovers. Uh, you can go with Cincinnati at 2,100. That, that Steelers offense, I mean, they're bottom, they're 2015 yards per play. They are uh, bottom six in success rate on early downs. This is a, you know, 100 above the salary minimum. Uh, definitely could see some uh, things going their way. Ben Roethlisberger has been, I don't know if he's protecting an injury, but even if he plays, like it could be, it, it could be shaky. And if not, you're getting a defense going against Mason Rudolph. So uh, like them. And uh, I think another sneaky one is, is San Francisco at 2,300. Uh, again, this is one where you look at them and they're getting healthier. Um, they've been really good against the run. So it's going to force Breeze uh, to throw the ball. He's been on the injury report. He had like a cakewalk last week. No one's going to expect it. So they'll, they'll be like, they probably won't be owned at all. How about you, Tags? What are you looking at this week? Uh, I, I mean, I might just go with the Rams. I know it's the worst thing in the world to play someone against the Seahawks. You really don't want to do that, but they're 2,200. They're at home. Should be a, it's a divisional game. Should be, I, I expect it to be competitive. And while Russell Wilson's going to put up point, points on the board, I, I just want a couple sacks. Uh, the Seahawks have allowed 24 sacks this year, which is top 10 in the league. Uh, they've turned the ball over. Actually, there's been eight interceptions, which is also one of the higher marks in the league. So it's not to say that Russell Wilson's, you know, unable to throw an interception. Uh, so, it's just 2,200 for that defense, the team that generates a lot of pressure. And that's basically what you're looking for in order to generate turnovers. And that knowing that they have the perimeter cornerbacks that they do, maybe it slows down the Seattle Seahawks offense just a little bit. Um, but again, this is just comes down to what I have left after constructing the, the rest of my lineup, because ideally I am spending 2,500 or less on my defense. All right, let's finish it up. Let's do a stack of the week. Who do you have, Chris? Stack of the week, I am going with... Drew Locke, Jerry Judy, Noah Fant. Wow. Are you okay. worried about Fant's ankle? Because they said he re-aggravated that high ankle injury he had. If, if for some reason that's an issue, um, I would pivot to Hamler. Or you could really put it, you could go Hamler or Tim Patrick. Um, both of those guys played ahead of uh, Deshaun Hamilton last week. But I definitely want some Locke, Judy exposure. Um, and then you could vary it with the other pass catchers. Okay. All right, Tags, how about you? Stack of the week. I mean, I, considering how bad the Rams played, I, that they lowered the salaries like uh, Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. I can fit Goff, Woods, Cup, and then even come back with Tyler Lockett on the other side and find a way to make that work in lineups. So I'm gonna I'm gonna attack that game with Jared Goff, his receivers, and grab another play on the other side. All right, I will say that per the latest practice reports, Noah Fant is reportedly pretty much not maybe not quote unquote fully healthy, but pretty much ready to go. So I think we should be <laughs> safe there. Uh, how about lock of the week, Chris? Who do you have? Oh, man. Lock of the week. I will have to go with Mike Davis. He's just too cheap. He's just too cheap at at 4K uh, going against Tampa Bay, which is a tough matchup. But you look at his production and, you know, he didn't play Tampa Bay this year, but you, like he's five receptions even last game with Christian McCaffrey, um, and then now he's going to get all of the backfield carries essentially. Maybe Reggie Bonifon. If he, I think he's been activated. Gets a couple, but uh, Mike Davis is just way too cheap because we didn't know Christian McCaffrey was going to to miss the game. Yeah, and again, Mike Davis is four thousand on DraftKings. Just a, a free space. How about you, Tags? I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna go with Aaron Jones at seventy one hundred. I, I don't think I can go without playing him uh, in a lineup. It, it, in terms of matchup and what he's done in fantasy his price should be closer to Camara, around eight thousand. uh but 7100 is a discount and enough of a discount where they're i mean the packers are putting up five touchdowns on that jaguars defense it's just a matter of how and aaron jones could have you know one of those three touchdown games yep all right wonderful chris thanks so much for coming on just remind everybody where they can find more of you and your work uh, it was a pleasure, guys. Uh, you guys can find me out there on Twitter at Chris Raybon. You can also follow uh, all of my betting picks and, and prop bets and totals and sides and all that uh, at Chris Raybon on the Action Network app. Uh, and you can catch me on the Fantasy Flex podcast every Wednesday and the Action Network NFL uh, betting pod every Thursday. And although you can reach out to any of us for fantasy advice, if you need to learn anything about like the weekend or like hip stuff, (laughs) uh, go to Chris for sure. (laughs) Leave me in tags alone. Thanks to Pristine Auction. Don't just take my word for it. Go to pristineauction.com. Thousands of auctions every single day. Go to pristineauction.com. P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow breaking down every game.
looking for useful content, fantasy relevant information, and the data that's going to help your team win, then go ahead and subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. And while you're at it, give us a follow over on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Fantasy Pros so you can dominate all your leagues.